Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Failure Effect, a podcast about reclaiming the word failure and turning it into success. I am your host, Wayua Muli, and this week we'll be speaking to a very special young lady. Her name is Muthoni Ngugi. Those of you who are up to date with the celebrity scene in this country would already know her name. She is the owner of a furniture store called Gaze Furnishings Kenya. She is a mother of one, a two-year-old, and this is a significant part of her story. We'll get to that in a little bit. And she is 27 years old. So welcome to the show, Mudoni. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, karibu sana. I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> karibu, karibu. Asante sana. Now, you, your furniture store has been in existence how long? Seven years now. Seven years, my yes. goodness. And there's a point at which you have made a turnover of five million bob a month. Yeah. So I am curious to know, where does your business acumen come from? Because for your age, this range of experience is unusual and refreshing. Where did you understand the ins and outs of business? Well, uh, growing up, mm. I did not see myself here. I actually mm. just loved corporate. I loved the suits, you know, yeah. looking, speak and span, going to work. But then along the way, I found my passion, and then here we are. Okay. So I have learned what I know now mm -hmm. through experience, through constantly living through the whole journey. Right. Yeah? There's no book that can teach you how to run a business. Exactly. You have yeah. to learn it from the ground up for yourself, Yeah. yeah through your own experience. So yeah. when did you start? Tell me about the very first time you made your income and what you were doing. Well, I started in 2017. Yeah. So the seventh year should be this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the end of this year should be our seventh year. Mm -hmm. So um, should I tell you from how it started? From yes. I, you know, from how I was employed to... Yes, let's start at the top. Yeah, so, um, mm -hmm. well, I was employed mm -hmm. um, as a... I used to work two jobs. Immediately after high school, I mm -hmm. became a teacher. I became mm -hmm. an English teacher, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, not only English, I used to teach Fasihi and mm -hmm. literature. Because wow. I was very good at it in, in uh, high school. Mm -hmm. So I used to earn 4,000. Yeah. Then um, this very same time, I got another job mm -hmm. as a tutor yeah. late in the e later in the evening. So I was earning 3,000. So that like 7,000 at that time. That time, was, it was good money. Yeah. Yeah, and I was living back home. Mm -hmm. So later, um, I progressed to waitressing because I, I speak a foreign language. So I, I went to the hotel industry and then I became a, a waitress. So mm -hmm. the salary now, of course, doubled. Yeah. And then because I had tasks to make it, I took two jobs. So I would do waitressing in the morning, different hotel. And then in the evening, another different uh, restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A Turkish restaurant. Wow. In the morning, Italian. Yeah. In the evening, Turkish. My goodness. I mean, that's, that's a lot of hard work at the time. What, what was it that was driving you? Well, um, I, at that time, I did not understand, you know, mm -hmm. I was too young. I did not understand why I was driven like this. Mm -hmm. But now, knowing what I know now, I think it's in me to just mm -hmm. be hands-on with things, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So from waitressing to interior decoration and furnishings, how how no, that? No, no, no. So now I became a waitress. I was uh, working two yeah. jobs. And then from there, I was like, no, I really, I still like to go to the corporate world and dress yeah. up, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I told you yeah. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So um, one day I was just walking down the supermarket in Yaya. Mm -hmm. I, I could not afford anything. Oh. Yeah. So I was like, uh -huh. let me just, because I loved to walk down Yaya. Yaya had um, Mr. Price home. Mm -hmm. So I would love to walk and be like, oh, these things are nice. Yeah. yeah. So I met someone and then that person, um, I think he had... He had, a, he had a disability, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I helped him carry something up to the, sh like, you know, mm -hmm. the thing that he needed help with. And then he asked me, what's your name? And, uh, you know, and then he gave me a job as a PA. Mm -hmm. That's how I landed an office job. So mm -hmm. everything just has been good. Yeah. So despite having an office job, I still continued working at the Turkish restaurant. So two mm -hmm. jobs still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd sleep like three hours. Okay. Yeah. And you were paying, what was the business that you were paying for? Was it, was it furnishings? Uh, the, the, the oh, no, no, no. This was a property. It was a okay. property company. Mm -hmm. So I continued. So in the property company, I learned so much because I was being paid 15,000, I wow. think. But take home was about 12,000. Yeah. Yeah. So I felt like I'm underqualified for this job because mm -hmm. now I dress up in 
to work and mm -hmm. I I used a computer. I had not even gone to computer school yet. Right. So I felt like I'm overpaid for this job. I felt then slowly I started developing this thing in me that to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm -hmm. So I started learning and, and yearning to learn, you know, everything about an office, how to do filing, how to email, you know, how to all those things that office work needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now with that, I left the job and then I got another job at a PR firm. Mm -hmm. Now this was now, this this was it for me because yeah. now I feel like, oh my God, I have a career without even starting one. Right. So mm -hmm. when I got this other job, it was like 50,000. Wow. Take home was 40 something. I, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to surviving with under 15,000, you know, like I would pay my rent about yeah. 10,000 and the other things like fair, then the night job is for food and, you know, there's a way I had organized my life. Mm -hmm. So now here I have mm -hmm. like 50,000, let's say that. Mm -hmm. So I stopped working at the restaurant because now this was more demanding. Yeah. So now I thought to myself, if I'm used to surviving under 15,000, mm -hmm. what am I doing with all the other money? Mm -hmm. That's like, a lot of money, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I did a standing order at Stima Circle. And then there's a part of my money that I could not, I would not see, you know? So I, I, I continued living small, the same way I was living, the, the way I was used to, because nothing had changed. I had not bought anything of a significant, you know? And I was still a baby. I was thinking, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. So I put a standing order uh -huh. for it to go to that account. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So that standing order specifically, I needed a car. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I was, I was, you know, I was already now dressing up the way I want, you know, the nails, the hair. Yeah. But now I'm thinking, um, you know, my tattoo is, is you know, yeah. they, they are, Kwanzaa this time when it's raining mm -hmm. and you have to go to work, people are rubbing on your makeup, like, oh no, mm -hmm. oh no. So I really needed a car. That's mm -hmm. where I was saving up. Mm -hmm. So I kept, I kept saving up. Now in this job, the same, the same acumen applied, like, to whom much is given, much is expected. And this has been me. If I feel like you're overpaying or I, I feel like I'm under deserving, I work extra hard to prove to you that I'm deserving. Mm -hmm. So I kept pushing. So in this job, nothing would move if Modoni is not in the office. Right. And I liked it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I kept pushing. I brought in results. At some point now, I was promoted to sit uh, at Kenyatta University, was it sixth floor with the vice chancellor? Yes. It was a very executive floor uh -huh. to handle the KU account, to wow. do BTL, that is above and below the line marketing. Mm -hmm. I've not gone to campus yet. Yeah. It to Nikirere. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So now I thought to myself, one day I was walking down the gate from KU to the admin block, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, God, Look at my phone. I have an iPhone. Mm -hmm. I have this long hair, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting at the executive floor. So I was telling God, please humble me. Mm -hmm. Increase in me as I decrease. Yeah. yeah. And then so an epiphany just came to me that, look, God has made you sit in a university to, you know, to do marketing for them. You know, we used to do newspaper ad. I used to check on check on a, you know, there's a, it's called a strip. Yes. I would check, you know, I would learn and learn and learn. And I've not gone to school yet. So it came to me that, you know what? Mm -hmm. You need to go to school. Right. Because if you're doing this out of just knowledge and learning and yearning for more, how about when you school yourself? Mm -hmm. So that's when I joined campus. I okay. joined the Nairobi University School of Business, Loa Kabete. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so now I'm studying and working. Mm -hmm. So when I left the job, I had some money for my car. You remember? Set yes. aside. My, when I was promoted, I went to 70000 Wow. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So now I still maintained my Kadogo lifestyle. Yeah. yeah? So I had some, he, like, some money put away. So when I was leaving the job, you know, <clears throat> eventually every good thing comes to an end. And then mm -hmm. maybe, not maybe, if mm -hmm. you need to grow and expand your wings, you need to look broader. Mm -hmm. wider mm -hmm. yeah so i left the job now I, was, I took a sabbatical i wanted to just rest and buy my car and now live lavish yes right because mm -hmm. i could check on the numbers i'm like at my age mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm doing well but i kept telling god to increase in me so that i you know because i can easily 
if you are in the world, you can easily be like, do you know who I am? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? So that money set aside was for a car. So I was shopping for a car. Then one day I get to this car yard mm -hmm. and I want to buy this car. Then those, it was an Indian salesperson mm -hmm. or rather the owner. And then he said, do you have a job? I said, no, no, no. I just left the job. I want mm -hmm. to rest. I think mm -hmm. I've worked so hard, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And then he said, then I'm not going to sell you the car. Wow. It's like, what? But I, I have the money. And he's like, because you're living in VAS. You know, you're living the other way of life. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have a business, then buy the car. Mm -hmm. Not buy the car, then have no nothing. Yeah to sustain the car. Eventually, if you buy things that you don't need, you'll end up selling the things that you need. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. Mm -hmm. And I went home and it's like, what is, what is wrong with this person? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is a part that I have not told you. This whole mm -hmm. time when I moved home from home, I moved from home when I was 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. 19. And before I moved home, there was this advert I used to watch. Um, <clears throat> It was a detergent advert, and this lady was looking nice with her bob wig. She was wiping her countertops, and it looked so spick and span. It's like, mm -hmm. this, this is the kind of life I want to live. Mm -hmm. So when I was moving out, because I, I was a good kid, mm -hmm. so my mom just prayed for me. I, was, okay. I didn't run away. Yes. She prayed for me, and she, she gave me, like, sufurias and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I said, no, mm -hmm. I want just a padlock. Because okay. a padlock was expensive at the right. time. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the sufurias that she had, I wanted a different kind than when I saw in that advert. I wanted everything top tier, mm -hmm. you know? So I said, no, no, no. You, you can have that your life. <laughs> Me, yeah. I wanted this life. Uh -huh. So when I moved to my house when I was 19, I, um, well, I was living, okay, I, I put my bag down and then I put a rug my bag with clothes, that was my pillow. Okay. And then I would cover myself with a kikoi. I mm -hmm. came with a kikoi. Wow. That's, that's all I had. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a list of things I need to have in that house. Like top tier things. So I, I dissected them into months. Like January, I need to have this kind of pots. And I still do that up to date. Uh -huh. <laughs> so February, I need to have a mat. Then, you know, month by month. So I ended up ticking. And because I was sticking, my house just slowly was progressing and my space was becoming more beautiful. So the people who would visit mm -hmm. would be like, wow, this is such a nice space. Mm -hmm. Because that time, interior was not a thing in the country. Mm -hmm. It was very, very rare. Mm -hmm. So, and then this other thing I got at that time, like there's a thing in my head that I use till now. You see those women in Karen who have nice things in their house and they're so many and so expensive mm -hmm. so i thought to myself for these people to have these things yeah they have been collecting over the years mm -hmm. you can't just go to a shop and buy the best things at mm -hmm. once mm -hmm. so that has been my mantra also for interior so i've been since then i've been collecting and taking off my book and what so when people come they want to they admire, so they want something like that. Mm -hmm. So then I just started selling. I'd be like, okay, that one I'm selling. And this one I'm selling. So my house became a showroom. Mm -hmm. So I would sell, replace. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a couch, I would go to a local fundi, make my couch the way I want, Google the best. At that time, Kada keeping up with the Kardashian was a yeah. thing. I don't know if it's a thing now. I don't watch it anymore. <laughs> but I wanted uh -huh. that kind of, of uh, lifestyle. Yeah. So I would go to fundis and they make it for me. Even the fundis would be shocked where I'm coming from with yeah. this kind of designs. They'll be like, hey, you're, you're Madame Siezi. So I'd, I would hype them, you know. Yeah. So even if it has an error, I'd be like, they tried. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then I would sell things in my house. Like I sold three pieces of, maybe three pieces of the couch, the set, mm -hmm. three times. Mm -hmm. Sit on the floor, make a new one. Sit mm -hmm. on the floor, make a new This whole thing I was doing while still working my job at KU. Right. Under the PR firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this would help me to move around fair here and there. Mm -hmm. So that my money that is put away to the uh, standard, what is it called? The, the standing order. Yeah, to the, the standing the order yeah. remains as is. Mm -hmm. So I would find other ways to survive and forget that I have that money mm -hmm. on that side. Yeah. So I was building this. I did not know I'm doing this as a business. This was not my idea to do a business. This was to facilitate my life. Right. 
to a, a young corporate woman, mm -hmm. you know, with ease. Mm -hmm. So when I left the job and that salesperson refused to sell that car for me, uh -huh. I went to, well, it's the fundi who approached me that I was using constantly. And he mm -hmm. said, why don't you come with machines and then we can build something together. Mm -hmm. It's like, now that I don't have a job, I, I think I can, I can do this. Right. Yeah. So I put the car idea aside and pursued money. I pursued business with this money. So I got machines, got a place, and then we started. This wow. is how Giz started. So that's the other thing about you is that I don't think a lot of people know this is that you're also a huge fan of education, right? Mm -hmm. So you are doing your business course right mm -hmm. and then you've also done a couple of other courses in the meantime yeah yeah what have yeah. you what what do you know about tell us what you studied <laughs> i have done a bit of hr uh -huh. this was a need yeah. for my business because the more we grew the more there was a need of um to to manage people mm -hmm. you know human management mm -hmm. not human resource man let's just say human yes. management because i was now dealing with all sorts of people from all sorts of you know um lifestyle mm -hmm. and in my career, the people who helped have helped build the business are, you know, <laughs> uh -huh. they're a bit hard to deal with. Okay. So I had to start take this course mm -hmm. up for them. Yeah. And then I did um, flying. Mm -hmm. That is the private pilot license one. Mm -hmm. That is for me. Okay. Yeah, that is for All me. Right. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. So right. So you're here. You've got your. I assume you've got your degree. Well, okay. We'll we'll get to the degree part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're in school, and your business is growing, and everything looks great. And at that time, you're twenty three. Yeah. 23, okay. yeah. All right. About there. 21 to 20. That is happening from 21 to 23. I moved at 19. Yes. So from 19, I had to know how to sustain that life. Yeah. And then my first house was 10,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that time, 10,000 was a lot. Mm -hmm. And my mom would be like, I have never seen someone who starts life from the top. Your fall will be so hard. I'll be here. <laughs> I'll not even be here to catch you. Oh. So each time I slept on my bag, the bag mm -hmm. was the pillow. Mm -hmm. And my, the kikoyo I used to cover myself with, I'd be like, so now, what if I fall? Mm -hmm. You know, it, there's so many things came to my mind. Like, what, yeah. what if I fall? You know, what, what if this happens? What, so that fear of failing mm -hmm. kept me on my feet. And right. I wanted to make her proud. Okay. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. And then what happens at 23? Someone walks into your life? Well, that's, that's, <clears throat> that's way farther. Mm-hmm. That is um, now, at, is it 23? At 23, I had bought a house yeah. at Kamulu. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, now because of this habit of, of saying, okay, we've gone. <laughs> yeah, we've, we <laughs> we've gone way ahead. <laughs> so, okay, so let's come back. We come, back. Yeah. we come back to now. I started their business. Mm -hmm. the f and I was flat broke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay. now it's not giving. I, I don't know what to do. I've already bought the machines, there, so now what? Yeah. I think I I can say comfortably I'm the first person in this country to post furniture on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I had Instagram account with my pictures. Mm -hmm. Then I just um, switched it all with mm -hmm. furniture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like imported furniture. I had not seen something like that ever. Right. Because so many people unfollowed me actually. Oh. Yeah, and so people in the DM were like, "This is not what we wanted to see." Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so now, I, when I was doing that, I didn't expect to even get clients there. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't remember what was my thought process of doing that. I think now it was a passion growing uh, in within me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got a DM uh -huh. from a client on that account, mm -hmm. and that seemed so strange. <laughs> wow. I know, right? And she brought me a deposit, I think, of a hundred thousand. I went to pick it in Lovington in a mat. Uh huh. Oh my God, I, I was like, are yeah. they seeing my 100,000? <laughs> uh -huh. Then I thought to myself, so you can make 100,000 from a call? Hmm. Mm -hmm. This is serious. So I kept posting. Mm -hmm. I satisfied that client. She's one of my close friends till now. Mm -hmm. So I kept posting. I kept posting. Then people would come. It mm -hmm. just became... It, I don't know if there was an algorithm at that time, but mm -hmm. it was now on people's pages and people who were interested, were tapping on it. Yeah. So that is the first year. Second year, still no business. Like one, 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 mm -hmm. one, one that can pay at least 
my 10,000 rent mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. food. So mm -hmm. I'm living hand to mouth. Right. I have a business, but hand to mouth. Yeah. So in the third year, I think, third or second, almost the end, ah, when it rained, it poured. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh my God. Uh -huh. <laughs> it just came, clients came in and came in, referrals after referrals, people were happy. These are now intricate designs that people are not used to, mm -hmm. yeah, at that time. So that's when the business blew up. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when the business blew up, I was able to buy a house. Because mm -hmm. my mom, my, my mom, mm -hmm. on my, my ear all the time, she's like, you need a house. Mm -hmm. You know, people, mm -hmm. you know, people, they're old people. Yeah. They feel like you need, when you just bump into somebody, yeah. you need to secure property. Yeah. So I did secure property at mm -hmm. Willstone Homes. Mm -hmm. They were so helpful. Uh-huh. Very yes. helpful. Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> exactly. Well, they came to my my store yeah and they were like we need to sell your property this is the thing about entrepreneurship when you're in it you feel so small mm -hmm. but the people who are watching mm -hmm. they see you so it's like um it's a big thing enigma yeah. to them you're like so successful <laughs> but as you walk even to date yeah as you walk within the entrepreneurship journey mm -hmm. You feel so small, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what they saw in me. Why was I shortlisted to buy a house? Mm. <laughs> I was just a baby. Yeah. So I told them, no, I, I don't have the money. Mm -hmm. And then they said, um, how much do you have on your phone? I said, uh, 300,000. Mm -hmm. And then they said, okay, to pay you. Give us that one. <laughs> Here is the offer letter. Yeah. It's like, what? So I can buy a house <laughs> yeah. with that amount? They're like, yeah, so... We can, you can give us that as a commitment, then we can draft a payment plan for you that mm -hmm. this is how you'll be paying for the, for the house. Mm -hmm. So we drafted a payment plan for paying, I think, 100000 weekly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How I made it, I cannot say I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it was through constant hard work, you yeah. know, pushing for sales, satisfying clients. Satisfying client is the key word here. Yes. Yeah, because they keep coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how I got property okay mm -hmm. so but the house was off plan so you didn't move <coughs> into it immediately no i did not okay. move to it into it immediately yeah. so i had a plan of moving to that new house mm -hmm. then i met someone aha uh -huh. right so this is i think what everyone has been discussing <laughs> <laughs> so. so before i met the person yeah i was feeling like Mabani, you've done so well yeah you need someone because mm -hmm. now I had made like a small space. I'd mm -hmm. moved to a bigger house. Now, yeah. no, it's not 10,000. Now it's bigger, but not crazy amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's now beautiful. The chandelier, there's a yeah. dining. Like it's now yeah. that Kim Kardashian standard. Yes. So I would feel so lonely, you know, just cooking by myself, eating by myself. It was just so lonely. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I felt like I needed a husband. Mm -hmm. And I was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> was pastors i would have even just continued studying or yes or whatever yeah so i met someone mm -hmm. through a friend mm -hmm. so because i normally i don't go out alone i'm an introvert so mm -hmm. this particular friend of mine this one time she's like oh you're so upfront you yeah. need to come for these things mm -hmm. so she insisted and i went mm -hmm. and then through her i met someone mm -hmm. yeah so okay, <laughs> okay. all right mm -hmm. and you fell in love <coughs> Yes, not instantly. Yeah. Not instantly, mm -hmm. but eventually. Okay. And he swept me off my feet. Yeah. I mean, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Literally. He was that guy. He came in a chariot. Okay. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> he came in. A, he was tall. And yeah. you know. Yeah. He looked like he knew, he knew what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he, he was in the right age bracket that I needed. Mm -hmm. I felt like my mind needed... I liked older. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I don't get misquoted for this. Older, mm -hmm. like I can handle 10 years older. Right. Because I need to be talking to my man about mm -hmm. devolution. And, yes. And you know, yeah. I don't need to be asking you what is happening in Russia. And you're like, Putin is fat. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So he said mm -hmm. he's 35. Mm -hmm. And he just ticked off my, you know, yeah. my list. Mm -hmm. Usually, I'm such a writer. Yeah. Yeah, I told you I used to write for month one. I write this and this. So, I also journal a lot yeah. of my 
all my thoughts and mm-hmm. feelings mm-hmm. and things I need in my life. Mm-hmm. So up to a certain point, everything that was happening in my life was not a coincidence. I mm-hmm. had written it down. Mm-hmm. So it looked, I would refer to my books and it looked exactly like what I had written. So at that point I had written, I needed a man and he had this kind of qualification and this particular person ticked the book. Okay. Yeah. So it was a whirlwind <coughs> romance, I suppose, for how long? Sorry? It was a whirlwind romance for how long? Uh, well, uh, I don't know how to answer this really, but it was good. It yeah. was good. For the first three months, mm-hmm. I was thinking, God, this, is, this must be a reward for me. Mm-hmm. For being nice to people, mm-hmm. you know, for also not going to drink at the club. I right. never, I've never been that kind of a girl. Okay. And so I was thinking, now me to God, you must be rewarding me. I see you. Thank yeah. you. I see you <laughs> got me. <laughs> I was, I thought I was in love. Right. Yeah. Knowing what I know now, that <laughs> definitely was in love. Yeah. So... Yeah, in the mm-hmm. third month, he had mm-hmm. already moved into my house because okay. my house was better than, mm-hmm. than what he had. Mm-hmm. So he had moved into my house. Mm-hmm. And then now now we were discussing on, on marriage mm-hmm. and also moving to a bigger house. But now he found me moving to the house that I, was, I had bought. Mm-hmm. That I was in the process of moving. Yeah. So we were supposed to be handed over maybe three months from that time that we met. Mm-hmm. The property, yeah? Right. So I had bought... Um, a few items. I had, I think, I'd shipped in half of a container mm-hmm. of high-end furniture right. for myself. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'm in this business. So I knew how to. I knew how to find my way through this. So mm-hmm. he found me in the process of moving, and I was like, okay, why don't you mm-hmm. move into my house? Mm-hmm. He 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 structured himself to look like he had something going on in his life. So I thought, why don't you move in to mm-hmm. my house, mm-hmm. and then. You can either pay me half of it, then we can go on, or, or but just pay me all of it, then I can pump into business and you will be living yeah. in your house. Yeah. It will have been easier for you because off plan was, was it 3.38 million. Okay. That was cheaper because yeah. now we are selling it at five, five to six okay. million. Okay. Yeah. So I would, had, I would have made his life easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What did he say to that, to the proposal? Well, he said, um, I can't live in your house. Mm-hmm. And I'm not comfortable living in that particular house. Because he had, he had moved into my house, but not with his clothes. And he he was just spending too much time there. So yeah. I'm assuming he was living with me. Because mm-hmm. if I come from work, he's there. Mm-hmm. In the morning, we wake up together. Yeah. This was a fairy tale. Hmm? Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, I cannot move into that particular house. I'm not comfortable. Actually, it's very far. Mm-hmm. So he said, um, this is my budget. Let's look for another house that we can, you know, stand a life together. Yeah. Yeah, just the two of us. Mm-hmm. So in this t- whole time frame, he had met my mom already. Okay. He, yeah, he was like, I need to see your mom. It's like, mm-hmm. this, is, this is it. Yes, yes. So he went to see my mom. Uh-huh. But wait, before he went to see my mom, it was my mom's birthday. My mom is very Western mm-hmm. in her, like, she's not so tradition, yeah. traditional, so you would invite a boyfriend for dinner. Mm-hmm. I have never, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was allowed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I had done good, I had done well for myself, so there's mm-hmm. no way she would be like, don't bring boys yes. here. Yeah. But for just self-respect, mm-hmm. I knew the person I'll take would be the one. Exactly. So it was my mom's birthday, that was July 31st. Mm-hmm. And so I invited him. Mm-hmm. And he didn't show up. Oh, my goodness. He didn't show up. I waited. I was embarrassed. I was home. I think I went home and cooked and all that. And so I was ready. My mom was ready. My mom even did make up to see this man that oh. I'm bringing. Because I've never brought a man. Yeah. So he didn't show up. That was another red flag that yeah. we I ignored. My mom took it to account, but I ignored. He's mm-hmm. like, so why would someone be invited to your mom and, and stand us up? Doesn't make sense. Did he have a what was his excuse? He said he got cold feet. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> red flag know. though. Yeah. Uh-huh. So fast forward, he still met her. Yeah. I think he met her or they were on phone, but he did he didn't meet her. Yeah. So this is three months or four months in the relationship. Now we are planning to move. So I there's a I used to like praying and fasting. Mm-hmm. 
but not in my house. Cataloni Prayer Mountain. Yeah. So I used to go there a lot. I mm-hmm. frequent there so many times. Yeah. When I feel that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting weary, um, I'll just go. Yeah. And I don't mean weary in terms of money and all that. Mm-hmm. It's just as a person, mm-hmm. I would feel like I need refilling. Yes. All the time. And even instead of going to a staycation, that would be my staycation. Because mm-hmm. I'd go there, take a blanket, spend a week, three days, and come back. Okay. So on my way back, there are these mm-hmm. houses that were being constructed just at the junction of Machakos. Mm-hmm. And I love them so much. So every time on my way back, I would pass through that house. Mm-hmm. And this mountain, because my friends would be like, I need to know your, your secret. Like, okay, let me take you. So every time I would even go with my friends, I would drop by that house on my way back to Nairobi and show them that this, this house is, this is, this is like Europe. This is where I want to be. I want to be in this kind of houses. Mm-hmm. So when he said um, his budget, my mind just came. I just, just ran to that house. And I knew that's where I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. So I took him there. He loved it, but he was like, no way. There ain't no way I'm living out of town because that is out of town. And my personality, I love to live away from civilization. I love to live in the bush. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, with time, he bought into the idea and we moved. But now on moving, he was the one to facilitate the rent. And then I come with the furniture because I had already bought the furniture. Yeah, so I came and did the interior, staged the furniture, blindfolded my husband. <laughs> Who is your husband? <laughs> <laughs> that time, I'm saying, you know, yes, l- yes, using that term very yes. <laughs> lightly because I know what a husband means <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so blindfolded my husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's now surprising him to the big mansion. Yeah. He came with his clothes in the trunk. He really, we really wanted to start life together. No suitcase, no nothing. We just started everything brand new. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. that is my fairy tale story. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the honeymoon <coughs> phase continues even after you move in. So, so well, before, is it before, before that, before we moved to that place, mm-hmm. we had a bit of altercation. This is what the thing. If we had a disagreement, he would be quiet on me mm-hmm. for two weeks and that would kill me yeah you know it's mental torture knowing what i know now that is a a red flag yes 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 (laughs) don't don't date people who cannot communicate Mm -hmm. why they're feeling and maybe ask for some time and be like i cannot talk now but i can i will talk about it later yeah yes so he would be silent on me Mm -hmm. and that killed me yeah so at some point before moving to the new house i had called it quits okay be like so I was on phone with him telling him this this is over. We can't do this anymore. We can't I can't keep hurting like this when I want to talk and you don't want to talk. So mm-hmm. I was ending things. Mm-hmm. And in that process, I don't know, something told me to test pregnancy mm-hmm. because I was feeling funny, mm-hmm. you know. So when I'm calling quits with him on phone, mm-hmm. the line turned out too. Oh wow. You were pregnant. I was pregnant. In the middle of a breakup stage. In the middle of a pre- And this is, this is all under six months. Oh, wow. That yes. was, re- it moves like in, a train. Yes, this, this yeah. was a train. In uh-huh. under six months, we had traveled. Yeah. I think all weekends we were away um, on vacation mm-hmm. around the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you told him on that phone call that you're breaking up. I did up. tell him on that phone call. And he was, he was happy. Uh He was happy Mm -hmm. and he came home and Mm -hmm. reconciled Mm -hmm. and this seemed like a sign. It was like, good. Yeah. This is your, yeah. this is your, you know, this is your cue. Yes. Yeah. And then this is what I've not told you earlier on in my life because of running into such an amount of money when I was younger. So I, I, up to date, I prioritize health Mm -hmm. and education. Mm -hmm. So there's a time I did a full body scan. Mm-hmm. And my egg count was like 0.001. Wow. Yeah, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. Because n- I think many ladies, um, I speak this with a lot of emotion, many mm-hmm. ladies, are they cannot give birth at a later age because they did not know this about themselves yeah. when they were younger. Yeah. Maybe if they did this test when they were younger, they would mm-hmm. have had just maybe a chance, like one shot to go. 
Yeah. Because the, the, the guy now at the time, he told me, you, sh- you need to have a baby sooner than later. Mm-hmm. Because my chances were like this slim. So the older I got, the more the eggs disappeared. Okay. So I had this in me. Uh-huh. So also now when we met, I also intentionally wanted to be pregnant. Okay. But I knew at the back of my mind, it's not possible. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. So when this happened, yeah. I knew that this is, this is God. This is now an answered prayer. This is the sign uh-huh. that this is the chosen one. Right. My young self telling my damn head. Oh, uh, no, no, don't beat yourself up too much, you know. I mean, so, okay, great. You're pregnant. <coughs> you and your husband, you can now move into your house. So I guess after this, you do the blindfold. Yeah, now we are pregnant. So yeah. now moving in the, man- in the mansion now makes even more sense because we are going to have a little family mm-hmm. coming up. Mm-hmm. So then before also moving, we did, um, we did a, a, a vacation, like a baby moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think I paid. Okay. Yeah, because uh, my mom, m- growing up, my mom traveled with me a lot, mm-hmm. like across the world. Yeah. So traveling has been within me. So I knew with a man or someone I loved or with my child, mm-hmm. we will travel a lot. Mm-hmm. So that one, I think I paid almost travel. This is what happened. If I pay for this one, he'll pay for that one. If I okay. pay for this one, he'll pay for that one. Yeah. But mine landed on the expensive... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> ba. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now, <clears throat> in one of these travels, the baby moon, we had an altercation and he was verbally abusive and also a bit of physical. Wow. Yeah. This is while you're pregnant. This is while I'm pregnant. I think three months. So yeah. he three hit you. Three months or three weeks. Because now we just, we've just gotten to know the news. Yeah. Yeah. So he hit me, I think with a chair. Or a towel. It was across the room. Oh and my he God. said, bitch. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, he said those, called those you names. words. Yeah. Yes. I was like, oh my God, the love of my life is angry. What yeah. can I do to save this situation? The situation. I must have made him this angry. So I beat myself up so much. I was like, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. It's like, all those words. Yeah. And I could not believe this is happening to me. This is, this is not real. This is yeah. a dream. It felt like a dream. Yeah. Because the fight went on, I think, from 11 a.m. to midnight, around 1 a.m. He still uh-huh. had not come down. And I drove to my friend. No, I didn't drive. I took a tuk-tuk. It was yeah. in Mombasa. I took a tuk-tuk to my friend's house, pregnant, crying. And I slept at my friend. So we came back on different flights. Okay. Yeah. You come back and you go to the same house. Were you afraid of him? Well... I was afraid of him because this is not something I'm used to. I've not even seen my mom going through this. Yeah. So I, at that time, I was not thinking this is something I'm going through. I thought this is just a moment. Ah. Uh, yeah, this I is, see. I made him angry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the thing is, I had a friend mm-hmm. who, from the opposite sex, mm-hmm. but just a friend, yeah? Mm-hmm. How I grew up, I grew up in Europe. Mm-hmm. So having friends of the opposite sex mm-hmm. is such a normal thing. Yeah. And in, in Europe, boundaries are very clear, yeah. you know? Because mm-hmm. up to date, well, my dad passed away, but mm-hmm. my Belgian dad. But mm-hmm. up to date, um, my mom would sit with her now husband and her ex-husband and have dinner right. with all of us. So it was normal. It was yeah. an upbringing. Mm-hmm. So I thought it's me who needs to cut this friend off because mm-hmm. it's upsetting him this much. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. So that's, that's what happened. That's the first time right. someone laid hands on me. Okay. Yeah. Because he was upset that you were talking to a male he, friend. Yeah, he was upset. Okay. So I, I apologized so much. Wow. Yeah. Did, and did he continue? Did the violence escalate or was that the one time? So every time we'd have an argument, it would, each blow became harder. Okay. It was a slap. Then the next time, two slaps. Mm-hmm. Then the other time... Four blows. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. I, I thought it was it was just him angry. Yeah. So you see the thing of you take someone with all the all they are. Yeah. I was like, it's okay. I will focus on the good things that he is. Mm-hmm. So let's just let's forget about that. And I suppose there are those phases where you will have a period of really great fun times until the next time he gets 
violence. Yeah, when yeah. when it's fun with us, yeah. it's fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it's bad, it is witchcraft bad. Yeah. <laughs> it is bad. Yeah. Bad that you're begging God to take you out of this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but mm -hmm. then you're pregnant. And I suppose walking away is hard. Yeah, so I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I cannot walk away because yeah. the people around me, my mm -hmm. mom and aunties and, and people who are older, mm -hmm. they're like, ndoa ni kuvumilia. Yeah. Yeah, if it is nafanyika. Tikofi tu, patu ingo mpigwa ngumi. Yeah. You need to you need to buckle up. It will yeah. get better with time. Okay. That's all I got. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eventually I suppose it's time to give birth. How did that happen? Well, um because of the violence, it continued yeah. violence and now cheating, bubble abuse. Um there was a time we had a, a, a fight and my water broke at 6 months. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I had to be rushed um, to the hospital okay. to save the baby. Mm -hmm. and then I gave birth, and then we had to sit for like two months yeah. in the incubator mm -hmm. for, you know, the baby to grow up to term. Mm -hmm. She was born with like 1.2 kgs. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so definitely needed special care and support. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you stayed in hospital with her Yeah. during these two months. What was he doing in the meantime? In in the two months, he had he he had been living with somebody else. Yeah, a girl. In your house. In my house. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. D mm -hmm. I'm I'm struggling to look for the good here. Did he at least pay the bills? I don't know. But did he? <coughs> was he was he there for you in any way? Yes, he was. Okay. He was. He was. I I cannot take that away from yeah. him. He was a provider. Okay. At that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we would share bills a lot okay. because now we are married. Yeah. You know, if he gets it, I get this. Yeah. For example, I told you the travel rule. If he pays for this trip, I pay for the next one. Mm -hmm. If I pay for these things, I pay for the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Meanwhile, what's happening on the business front? Because I'm assuming you're still doing your own marketing for gaze furnishings, you mm -hmm. know, and that in itself is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You're still the creative director, so to speak, of the business. Um, and yet you've got this personal circumstance that's taking time, you know, away from your business. I could mm -hmm. be wrong, but what, what was happening with gaze furnishings? Well, I had a, a strong team. Okay. So I thought. Okay. So they were handling everything when I was handling mm -hmm. my, my heart and personal mm -hmm. matters. Yeah. Um, you remember when I was telling you I, I imported furniture? Mm -hmm. It was like about one point something million, mm -hmm. 1.5. Mm -hmm. That was massive withdrawal of cash from the business account. Mm -hmm. And then comes this trip, massive withdrawal again. Mm -hmm. So his hustle is different from mine. Mm -hmm. My hustle doesn't need massive withdrawal of cash mm -hmm. from that account. You mm -hmm. need, you know, you know what I mean? Stability. You need stability. Yeah. But I was thinking it's it's an abundance. So yeah. uh, no you way, can. in no way it will, you know, yeah, ever the well will dry up. Mm -hmm. Then clients would come <laughs> one after the other following each other. So we were busy. Yeah. So I would not notice. Yeah. So when I was also hospitalized, mm -hmm. I would still wake up, go and feed the baby, come back, take a shower, sit on my bed and still work mm -hmm. my laptop and my book and mm -hmm. follow on clients, market, engage them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so this whole period, two months, mm -hmm. there's a certain branch that people are stealing from. Okay. Yeah, so sales will be made and not make it to the system. Oh, wow. So we used to make five million a month. Mm -hmm. That is a turnover. Mm -hmm. So one day I look at my books within that within that hospital time, yeah, yeah. it's about three hundred thousand. So three hundred thousand cannot sustain that level of business, mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah. the higher money you have, the higher money you make, mm -hmm. the higher the business yeah. um, requires, or yeah. the more it requires. Yeah. So okay. three hundred thousand could not sustain the business. Okay. And then now looking at my account, I was living lavish with my husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Living our dream life. Yeah. So that hurt my, my account. Okay. And the business account. Mm -hmm. So now, this is where we are. The business is shaking now. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now what to do? Uh huh. You know? Because when you're running a business and you're the owner, you start realizing that there's no one else who's the owner. 
Yeah. You don't have anybody to report to. Yeah. And you don't have anybody to blame. Mm -hmm. You have you just got yourself and you need to get these people so that you don't sink. Yeah. Because they all think you're doing well. Yes. So what to do? Now we are in rent arrears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the client still kept coming. So when a client brings a deposit and the landlord is on the door, what you do? You have set the landlord and keep marketing and then give a time frame that can still get other clients to cover up for this one. Mm -hmm. So that method worked for a minute, but not too long mm -hmm. because it's not sustainable. You cannot use um, clients' money to run a business. That's a mistake yeah. that people do and they don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to let the business run itself and then you let the clients, you know, the rolling payments are from one client to the next, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you're running a business like that, it's it's not a business. Yeah. <laughs> it this is, is a true. kiosk. <laughs> and you remember this was built as a business. There is an accountant, there's all those people set to run this engine. Yeah. So you can't imagine sustaining them. Yeah. Th that was that was one of my lowest points in my life. Okay. Because now I have given birth. My daughter mm -hmm. is in the incubator. I'm counting days. I don't know if she'll survive. She's like this tiny. Yeah. My husband mm -hmm. is shacking up with someone else. Yeah. Someone else. My business mm -hmm. is tanking. Mm -hmm. And the more the more I the more I use clients' money to run the business, the more I piss off the clients. Yeah. And you see our business was fully founded mm -hmm. on re on um, repeat clients. Exactly. So now I was taking pride in it and not anymore so that kills you. Mm -hmm. So to the client, they feel like you are fraud. Yeah. But to you, you're dying because that's not what you want them to feel. Yeah. You know? Because mm -hmm. they've been referred. So they'll be like, that nanny referred me and you did very well. What is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. So this is the thing. We took longer time to deliver at that time because now the business is struggling badly. Mm -hmm. We took longer time to deliver but delivered excellence. Mm -hmm. That was the rule now. Yes. Because now we have accepted. You have to accept what you're going through. Yes. And now find uh, something that will, they are pissed off, but they will forget the, the anger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after looking at the product. So we, co we con con they're concentrated on excellence mm -hmm. and still putting up intricate designs. Our designs are not normal. We sketch some, we get some from Pinterest, like we bring New York to Nairobi. Wow. for you mm -hmm. at affordable rates. Mm -hmm. So what we did is now we deliver excellence but take longer time which is, you know, clients are not as patient. Mm. Uh, yeah. As pre entrepreneurs pray them to be. Yeah. They are not. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just curious to figure how how are you juggling this because you know, like you say, you're in <coughs> hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when a client calls with a demand, how do you, how do you take your mind off your personal problems and focus on mm -hmm. okay this call needs to be answered this needs to be sorted as i said it reaches it, reach, it reaches a point in in my journey let yeah. me speak for myself that you realize you only got you and you have to wipe your tears and pick that call yeah. for example there's a time we had a, a very bad fight very physical mm -hmm. i think one of us was hurt you and your 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 husband. Yeah, yeah. my husband. Yes. Yeah. It was physical, and the client kept calling. I had to lock myself in the room. He's outside the room, like banging and and uh, loud, but I had to lock myself in this room, compose myself, and be like, <coughs> "Yes, finishing speaking. May I help you?" Wow. Yeah. My goodness. You know, th it is important to grant people grace because you never know what the person that you're talking to on the other through. side is going through. Yeah. yeah. I th and I never wanted people to know what I was going through. I, yeah. I put a facade. Yeah. But there's this one time I had to tell people what I was going through. Because mm -hmm. now the, f the fights became rampant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that is now after I left the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> now let's go back to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. So two months now I'm leaving the hospital. Mm -hmm. So he kept insisting that I should go to my mom because the African tradition is that when you give birth, where do you go? To your to mom. To your mom's, yes. Because you know nothing, so your mom can teach you. Yeah. My mom actually, my mom and dad came for me, mm -hmm. but I refused to go in their car. I said, no, I'm grown now. I have a house and I have a family. I'm going to deal with this hands-on. Mm -hmm. I insisted on going home. Yeah. 
on our way home, he was hurling insults. Oh, wow. And I was wondering, are you not happy? I mean, the baby survived such a big time. Why are you not happy? Yeah. He was just calling me all sorts of names. But by this time, my body, my mind is getting used to it. Yeah. So I'm just like, I, just, you know, this is him being him. And mm -hmm. I thought this is now what marriage is. Uh -huh. Yeah, marriage is the downs like that. The ups were looking kidogo, but the downs were many. So I thought this is it. This is the, this is the measure of a strong woman. Right. So we get home on the same night. He beat me up and stepped on my back. My yeah. goodness. Uh huh. I think there was an altercation because I was wondering. Well, I th when I got home, I I could find traces of the girl who was living there, because. Mm -hmm. The reason why he wanted me to go home, it's because they had a party the following day. Oh. And now she did not have time to collect her stuff. Okay. Because now they knew I'm going to my mom's and now I've changed my, my mind. Yeah. So I found traces of the girl and I was agitated. But at that point, I'm not as angry as I was when this whole thing started. Yeah. I had find a way of bottling up. Yeah. So he kept just telling me bad words, insulting me. Mm -hmm. And I think I... Hit him or pushed him. Mm -hmm. Ah, hell everything broke hell loose. broke loose. Yeah. He stepped on my back, beat me up. I think mm -hmm. now I lay on my bed. I'm just from the hospital giving birth. My baby's on her crib. her crib. So I lay on my bed and then put a pillow on, on top of my head. So he was, I, I could hear blows. Was it pillow? No, there was no pillow, but it felt like there was a pillow yeah. on me because I could hear blows on my head yeah. and, and stamp on my, on my back. And he's a huge he's a huge guy but my mind shut so i'm like no this is not happening to me so my mind wandered i'm like no yeah that is somebody else so maybe when he's done i'll i'll just continue sleeping so my mind went yeah blank yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i i understand that so completely. from that time mm -hmm. now the blows became even harder mm -hmm. i remember this one time um he was strangling me. And then his friends were in the house as well. So they were trying to remove him yeah. from strangling me. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I... And he was like, you cannot leave my house with my child. If you're leaving, she's staying. This is a newborn. This is a newborn. Who's just yeah. come out of NICU. Yeah. Right. So at that time, I, I, I don't remember why we called her one month old. One right. month now out of the tummy. Yes. As she should have. Yes. But ideally, she's three months. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's like a tiny, tiny baby because yeah. we were released at 1.8. Okay. So she's still like, a, you yeah. know, this yeah. small. So, um, yeah. So when I managed to release myself from the struggle, his friend helped me. Okay. I ran out. Mm -hmm. I ran out of the gate barefoot mm -hmm. and I've never gone back to that house okay. as a wife ever. Okay. That's how I left my marriage. Barefoot. Okay. So I went out the gate. I think mm -hmm. he was running after me. But mm -hmm. now because I was faster. Yeah. Yeah. And I went out. I jumped mm -hmm. into a tuk-tuk. And the tuk-tuk, it was even going the wrong direction. Yeah. It mm -hmm. went to Machakos. Mm -hmm. And then from Mach I, I alighted mm -hmm. and took another back. Mm -hmm. And I think I had my phone only. How right. I got my phone on my hand, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So I took another tuk-tuk. It's a tuk-tuk or a mat. Back to Nairobi. Um, got to Cabanas, so I knew from Cabanas if I take a match to my mom's, people will recognize me. Yeah, because he was somehow popular mm -hmm. in the social scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't popular, by the way, and I didn't mm -hmm. like it. Okay, but through association, yeah, I I became okay. But the business was very popular, very popular. But mm -hmm. nobody knew the person behind right. the business. But through association, eventually. People knew. So I was afraid of someone recognizing me at that stage. Well, I'm running. Um, I have no bra. I'm in my pajamas. My breast, the breast milk is up to my feet because now it's pouring down like this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, going uh, down. Uh, and my hair is a mess. Mm -hmm. So I ran out. Uh, before I ran out, I thought to myself, so I will die here because of a baby. Mm. That time I was like, I'm leaving. <laughs> so yeah. I ran out. From Cabanas, I took a bike to my mom's. So mm -hmm. when I was at the on the bike, 
a client called me with a certain issue of the delay and, and all that. Mm -hmm. And I remember that time I just told her, look, I'm coming from a violent marriage. I just ran out now. Would you please let me organize myself and then I'll call you back. And she's like, okay, 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 I'm so sorry. That's the only time I told a client okay. this information. Mm -hmm. So I went to my mom's house and my mom was like, no normal person, my mom and dad, no normal person would be with a one month old just from the incubator without yeah. returning. So they knew he's normal. He will return the baby. Yeah. So we, we sat and waited. Uh -huh. Nine is here. Uh -huh. Ten is here. Eleven, twelve, they call. Hello. Are you returning the baby? He said, no. What? I'm not returning the baby. I will hire a nurse to take care of the baby. Okay. So you see now, this is another thing. Take home. Before you marry someone, look at what that person fears. Check who does he fear. Because if he fears nobody, who are you? Exactly. Because this is your wife's parents. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he refused. My mom called. So we thought my mom is a soft spot. Yeah. He refused. Oh so my. the whole morning, the whole night, I just stayed up. I looked at the ceiling the whole night. Because mm -hmm. I was wondering, well, what did she feed? Is she okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. So by 6 a.m. I had woken up, gone to the nearest police station, reported the issue. <laughs> police station, it's so funny. You have to say this story for, to 10 people. Like you're telling Kipro teach, then Kipro teach like Susan Ebu Kujapa. Then you tell mm -hmm. Susan, then Susan is like, Cynthia, where could you skip and Yeah. So by the time we leave the, that police station and go to Chumbe police station, that was in now the area where we lived, mm -hmm. so like 5 p.m. Now we have to explain the whole process again yeah. to five more people because yeah. that's their zone yeah so we go we you know i get protection from the police they even come with ak-47 they're like ksh, ksh. yeah I'm like this person today <laughs> <laughs> he will see who i am yeah we are getting my baby yeah so we drive with mm -hmm. the the police car yeah to his house then luckily or luckily we find him walking his dogs Okay. Um, outside the gate. And yeah, just. Does he give the baby back? <sighs> okay. It is emotional. No, I'm feeling emotional. I'm sorry. This is a tissue. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It is okay. very bad scene. So we find him walking the dogs. And he's like, I'm not giving you any baby. She's my baby. I have equal rights. She's a one month. Old baby. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Um, so after pursuing, you know, persuading him, the police had to talk to him calmly. I was surprised. I thought police are brutal. Yeah. They need to be brutal because they came with AK-47. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I later learned that they had to be calm and talk to such persons mm -hmm. because he's also the father. Yeah. But ideally, I have all the rights. Yeah. So they spoke to him and he said, okay, you can get the baby, but none of you is getting in my house. So yeah. the baby was brought, this is like now 9 p.m. or 8, just very late at night. It's cold. Mm -hmm. So the baby was brought to me outside the gate. Oh. There is no building around that estate. Yeah. It was so cold. It was the most demeaning thing to do to a child, surely. Yeah. So it was, it was brought to me by the gate, wrapped up. Mm -hmm. And so I, I asked the police to tell him, okay, so then give me my car so that I can drive the kid mm -hmm. in a comfortable car. Mm -hmm. Then he said, there's no car he's giving. And it's my car. I, he met me with the car. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I went to the baby home mm -hmm. and squeezed ourselves with the police mm -hmm. back home. Okay. Yeah. Right. Then what happened? Like, so does he call the next day to check up on you guys? What's nothing? I don't remember if he called. Mm -hmm. At this point, I'm angry. Yeah. I don't want to talk. I okay. blocked him everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now I have a, a baby. My business is shaking. I don't want to go back to that <laughs> crazy 
haunted yeah. house. Yeah. So I'm back with my mom. Mm-hmm. And after like after like three weeks, I move out. So this is the mistake. I move out to this is where the failure effects. This whole thing is a failure effect because okay. let's talk um back to the withdrawal of yeah. money to live lavish. Yeah. Then back to people stealing, the staff stealing from mm-hmm. five million to three hundred. Yeah. And then now the third mistake mm-hmm. is to go and live lavish, not not live lavish, to move out mm-hmm. to a bigger house. And it's just the two of us. The house is like eighty thousand. Right. The mistake comes in that I am living to prove to him that I cannot fail because you don't exist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember that I was we were co-sharing bills. Okay. That's why it was easier. Yeah. Now it's not easier because mm-hmm. now I just given birth. My cash flow is not the same and I've gone to a bigger house. This is to prove a point to him and to people because you have a certain image to maintain. Actually, if you have a certain image to maintain, you need to stop because yeah. that's the fakest shit. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Ever. Uh-huh. But that is now what I know now, learning mm-hmm. what I know now. Mm-hmm. So we are in this house, it's 80,000. The business is still running. As always, nothing has changed, but the income is too low mm-hmm. to maintain all these kinds of things. Now, this is an added cost because I wasn't paying rent. Yes, I was paying for bills. I was paying for food. I was paying for trips, paying for things here and there. And we were two very expensive individuals. Yeah. But it's not the same now mm-hmm. that you're by yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So so you're <laughs> in the house. And you, did you have furniture? Because I remember you left all of your no, furniture. No, no, no. Yeah. He, he did not give me back the furniture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you see, he had brought girls in the house already. Yeah. So there's no way he could start explaining that these are my wife's furniture. Mm-hmm. So he did not bring the furniture. And then we were not in talking terms. Yeah. So later, like about when the baby was like six, six months. Mm-hmm. We, we got to talking terms mm-hmm. and so he agreed to give me back the stuff so what he would do is if he buys a fridge he gives us back the fridge if he buys a tv he gives us back the tv so we had to wait for him mm-hmm. to buy stuff for himself first mm-hmm. for us to get okay. so in this time it's hurting the baby because now we don't have anywhere to cook from and i don't want to buy because i'm in denial why am i buying twice yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so we are a friend of mine, a friend who was with me through this adversity, mm-hmm. she lended me a duvet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she even became one of my best friends. Okay. Yeah, she lended yeah. me a duvet because now we were just covering ourselves with a kikoi, me and the baby. Yeah. Now I could not give her milk anymore because it's dried up due mm-hmm. to stress. Yeah. And also because you don't have a fridge to store the milk that I would have pumped. Yeah. 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 So it, it just dried okay. up. So your baby's on formula. My baby's on formula. Okay. And that's also another expense. Right. Yeah. And business at this time, still the, 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 it's, the, 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 it's still going along. Very turbulent. It's yeah. going along, but going along, the, it's going downhill. Yeah. Gradually. Yeah. Until one time it went like down now completely. But okay. now this is gradual. Yeah. So I'm thinking I can handle it. Mm-hmm. So what do I do? I take a loan against my car. Okay. To sustain the business. Mm-hmm. So this this is okay. Mm-hmm. I still have my car, mm-hmm. and I I still I've gotten some money from this person, and mm-hmm. and um, this Monanchi credit. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, to facilitate the business to continue running. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then this um, the owner of that company, I had paid Kidogo Kidogo, you know. So the owner of this company tops <laughs> up for me, because uh-huh. yeah, I don't know what happened that I got to know him. Then he tops up the loan for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now everything still feels okay. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Yeah. But Life. that is another mistake. So I'm drowning because you don't take a loan, you to remove yourself from debt. Mm-hmm. Business loan is very healthy. Actually, I feel like if you don't have a loan in your life, reevaluate your right. life. And I mean the good kind of loan. Yes. Yeah. Loan to go to school. Mm-hmm. That there's good debt and bad debt. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel even if you're approaching me as a guy. Yeah. And you don't have a loan. <laughs> you're like, where, where have you? Are you growing? 
at yeah, all even you, no, yeah. not only alone you you, you don't have debt mm-hmm. then where's your growth where's the space how are you growing and and where are you coming from i i i, I don't relate myself but mm-hmm. if it's the bad kind of debt like poor lifestyle and yeah. that 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 i don't relate also okay all right yeah. okay. so now mm-hmm. that is mistake number four. yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting a loan to get yourself out of debt yeah. uh-huh from you know paying for the the, the shops yeah. and uh, um making the clients happy yeah yeah okay and then also moving to that new house that's yeah. like three times rent that is expensive right mistake number 52 yeah <laughs> okay so yeah. how did you what what happened how did you get through this next turbulent period of your life so i continued living like it's normal yeah i've not felt a hit but i had a mentor and this mentor would i would not tell him everything but the few times i'd call him and be like now i'm i'm, I'm stuck he'd be like why don't you just live below your means like you used to you remember how i got here mm-hmm. my business became successful because i was living a kadogo lifestyle i was in my 20,000 house that's why i was able to pay for a new house buy at 100,000 weekly mm-hmm right yes because my lifestyle was small my shops were like 35 and 30 mm-hmm. you know i had i had still this um saving thing that yeah. i acquired from way back mm-hmm. yeah so that is another secret to people if you want a successful business cut on cost live below your means and be very comfortable living below your means exactly yeah mm-hmm. and another thing if you don't care about your bank balance If your money is working for you and you've invested somewhere and you have 10,000 in your account, it's okay. Yeah. Now I'm getting more comfortable now okay. saying that. Yeah. It's okay because you know what there is something working for you. True. Yeah, that you, you you've invested in. Mm-hmm. It's working for you. Okay. Yeah, so now. Right. Um but so he was like, "Why don't you leave a you know, reduce your lifestyle mm-hmm. so that we can sort this people out because yeah. you get you're headed in the wrong direction. Mhm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you do that? No, I did not do that. Okay. The world as if funzo na mama. Yeah. <laughs> the world, the world put me down. Uh-huh. By force. Okay. Yeah, so um what happened? I continued living like that. And then sometime March last year, 2022, mhm. The warehouse burnt down. Oh wow. Yeah. So okay. this is what I didn't tell you before. So the business, the person we started the business with, my partner the fundi, mm-hmm. um in between the brand, he also in between now Gays being the umbrella body, he started his own brand. Mm-hmm. And then there was another person who joined in. Mm-hmm. This is what we said to ourselves. We want to be the best furniture production and manufacturing company in the country. Yeah. And so we brought ourselves together and shared a working space. Okay. So anybody who would go to it's called Living Art Brand Deco and then Gaze Furnishing is the mm-hmm. umbrella. Mm-hmm. So anybody who would go to this page or this page or this you are still within our ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. So we've locked the market down and uh-huh. I can say hey, we are actually the best in the country right. by doing that. Mm-hmm. Because if I come to your house like in every five people one person knows Gaze Furnishing. Mm-hmm. Yeah or the two um companies that are acquainted with gaze furnishing. So if I come to your house I see something and I ask you where do you get it from living at I'm like oh thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so that's how we locked the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, March 2022 the warehouse burnt down. Wow. With goods um each person who was involved the three partners me myself and the two me okay myself and the two people uh-huh. um i think each person lost goods worth 10 million wow i think most well, let me speak my mine was 10 million. yeah yeah oh 10, my goodness if if it's not 10 million by the time this fire debacle happened i was in debt of 10 million wow this is the pe- people's cl- things which have burnt yeah and they needed to be dispatched out mm-hmm. and also the, the massive withdrawal that mm-hmm. i used to do yeah that's also created debt yeah. because i used to take clients money to pay the shop rent to sustain life what what not 
So these collective mistakes costed 10 million. Mm -hmm. Here I am. Wow. I'm 10 million in debt. Okay. I don't know what to do. Yes. So what did you do? I tried to commit suicide. I did a lot of pills. Which? So before the pills, before the pills, I was in depression, bad depression. I lost so much weight. Mm -hmm. I was like 55 kg. Like if you do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm would, gone. There's yeah. a 55 kg good. And yeah. there's a 55 kg unhealthy. Yeah. So my friend, her name is Maureen Waititu. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that friend of mine. Yeah. So she met me and she was like, we need to fix you. Yeah. You are in bad shape. Yeah. So she found an appointment for me mm -hmm. at uh, Chiromo Medical Healthcare. Yeah. On emergency now, mm -hmm. because it's not easy to find an appointment at that particular yeah. um, organization. Mm -hmm. But she found an emergency appointment for me because mm -hmm. I was in I was in pretty bad shape. Mm -hmm. So I went through treatment and therapy and, and all that mm -hmm. uh, and rehab. Is that rehab? Well, not I, drug rehab. OK, not drug rehab, but just yeah, yeah therapy. My yeah, the, rehab. You are rehabilitating your emotions. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And this time still we are not sad, somehow not in good times is still the, the yeah. partner that I had. Yeah. And he would be like, you see, I told you she's crazy. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's admitted at mental yeah. hospital. Yeah. Uh huh. So. Um, so I got pills. There was Domicam, a uh, sleeping pill, heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For mad people. And then the antidepressants. Yeah. Yeah. So through this depression, I stopped therapy, I think. But therapy was working for a minute. But now, this is a, another part. When we started talking, it's like we were getting back together. Mm -hmm. So the therapist would be like, I'm talking to you, Modoni. You're comprehending. Mm -hmm. But the doing part is the harder part because now you have to do it and you're still with this person. Yeah. So it's like when I'm talking to you, you feel good. So I feel good uh, process. But when you go, yeah. you're still doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I feel like I'm getting no, nostalgic. No. Is nostalgic on the positive or? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I suppose it depends on your level of attachment. Although you are, you know, quite healed right now, still on the process, but quite healed. So I totally understand that your perspective will continue to change. Yeah. 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 So, so now mm -hmm. I tried to commit. I didn't try to commit. I did <laughs> commit. Okay, I'm, I'm not dead. But yeah. I did swallow like a bunch of pills, the okay. sleeping pills. So I, I, I didn't want to wake up. Okay. So at this time, I'm not, because before I, I decided to do that to myself, I thought of my child. Mm. But then I was like, of what good am I? Yeah. If I'm this broken, I'm such a shell. Yeah. I can't handle this anymore. The mm -hmm. pressure is too much. Yeah. Because now, pissing off clients, it's not a lot of clients. It was, let me tell you, because after this process, I did a whole list and called each one of them. Yeah. And was no, not me, my people called each one of them like, hi, hi, where you are? How's your furniture doing? Is it fine? Oh, they are healed and the furniture is fine. Yeah. So, but when you're going through it, you feel like it's a lot. Yeah. So it felt like all the clients, but it wasn't. It was like a 30%, but that 30% was, it drove me to almost the grave. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah? right. So I could not, I, I could not handle this anymore. And meanwhile, you still have the loan that you're servicing. Yeah. Now, about the loan. Because of the pressure, the intense pressure, I had to return the cars. I had to just do this, to take the cars to them and be like, please, eh, I need to sleep. Take yeah. your car. Okay, yeah. It's my car because I bought it in cash. Mm -hmm. they, they were my cars. But now, it's like theirs. Because mm -hmm. they own me. They... they what I owe them. So yeah. I took to them and say, just take it. I need to sleep. It's okay. I would buy another one. Yeah. So that was at least one burden of my, my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. So I have tried to commit suicide. Yeah. To take in like a 10 pills. Yeah. I woke up sweating. Oh. But like heavy sweat. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't die. Okay. God wasn't done with you. God wasn't done with me. Mm -hmm. I think 
that's when I got an epiphany that you are meant to do this. Yeah. You are meant to do this. You are a boss. Mm-hmm. You see the way people call themselves boss, babe. Yes. Oh my God, it takes so much to earn that mm-hmm. name. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I felt like that, that it's me. I need to take control of myself and my life. And I need to just write a plan and get out of this. Okay. So what I did, um, moved out from my 80,000 house, mm-hmm. went to live with my mom. Okay. So that is cut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, moved back home with my baby. Mm-hmm. Wrote a list of all the debtors that I owe, mm-hmm. even if it's 200,000. No, sorry, 200 shillings up to the highest. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't tell you this part. This whole part of clients being pissed. Yeah. <laughs> there was one uh-huh. <laughs> who was pissed mm-hmm. and locked me in. Oh, wow. You ended up in a cop station. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. What was her Nelson basis? Nelson Mandela situation. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm so yeah. sorry. Uh-huh. Well, it, 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 it's, it's her right. Yeah. She, everybody has a right to react the way they want to. Yeah. Yeah. But mm-hmm. these are... I'm saying this because mm-hmm. I'm trying to be as raw as possible because maybe there's someone out there who goes through this and doesn't know how if it's normal and how to come out of this. Yeah. I feel like failure is part of the process because mm-hmm. if you haven't failed, then you haven't started. Mm-hmm. Then what that that make make you? Mm-hmm. You know, there has to be that one business that goes wrong. There has to be that one day you speak as a speaker or as a script writer that goes wrong. That is script one. For the rest to be perfect. Yeah. If you don't have that, that means you haven't started. Then, what are you? Yeah, exactly. It's it's the not <coughs> doing, the not starting. That is yeah. perhaps the thing that you should be trying to avoid. You yeah. Know. All right. So now I write down two hundred. Do the guy. <laughs> right. Fifty. <laughs> so I would tick, tick, you know, one by one. If it is the clients, I I call them. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the hardest part because you have to now call them by yourself. There's mm-hmm. no one who can do this for you. Yeah. Because it's you who understand what's going on. Yeah. And you cannot tell them the whole stories yeah. that have led to this ripple effect and the failure yeah. <laughs> effect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have to be honest. Mm-hmm. Because at first it was like, um, the materials are late. Um, the pot, uh, you know. Yeah. But then again, I came to this conclusion that if I tell Susan and Karanja and Mwangi, Susan, uh, the materials are late. Karanja, the fundi broke his arm. Then one boy, mm-hmm. I'm sick. Mm-hmm. And then they meet. Yeah. What will that make you look like? Yeah. So uh, total liar. <laughs> so for the first time in my life, certain mm-hmm. things like honesty, mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. the truth will set you free. Yeah made so much sense mm-hmm. so i picked my call as hard as it, as it was i had like two friends a couple a husband and a wife who's who are my friends up to date mm-hmm. hold my hand and i made these phone calls mm-hmm. to all these people and be like i know i messed up i know you trusted me and this and this is what has happened i know it's not none of your business but please give us this certain time yeah to either pay you back or deliver this this item okay so some were i think most because of also i put a lot of prayer in this before i talk to the client i'd be like speak through me mm-hmm. like um moses could not speak yeah and god appointed him mm-hmm. and he said i cannot speak I'm, I'm a stammerer and god just said you just go i am who i am and i will talk you will i will talk through you yeah, yeah. so that's that's the verse i kept um with me as well i'd be like speak through me to these people because they are your people. Talk to them so that they can be less harsh on me. Yeah. So some of them agreed to that payment plan. Some of them agreed to the furniture. Mm. So we somehow, I think up to now, we are like 90% off that list. Wow. Yeah. So it's like a bit of 10% which we are still dealing with. Yeah. But of this 10%, all the new ones are impressed. So we are creating a new database. Wow. And then guess what? Uh-huh. The people we started the business with, the people who have made guess to what it is mm-hmm. back then, before mm-hmm. this debacle, mm-hmm. they have all come back because oh, their wow. furniture is now weary. 
Oh, congratulations. So see God. Yeah. God can restore when you feel like yes, you've reached the no end hope. of yeah. Yeah, because I had gotten to the rock. I think there's there a bottom be- after the rock. The, that's the one you had reached the basement <laughs> too. Basement three. It was the basement four. Yeah. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I feel like now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. God has taken me through that. All right. So now I'm at my mom's. Mm-hmm. That has helped also cut in debt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I go to work running people and taking care of people, but I'm coming from my mom's house. Uh huh. And don't be ashamed to go to your mom's house. I mean, you came from her. Mm-hmm. What is the worst that could happen? Yeah. Then this thing also, people, people have demonized failure. Mm-hmm. And they really make you feel bad about failing. It's okay. Put your chin up, shoulders high, shall be well. Yeah. I mean, I turned out well. Yes, you did. Indeed, you have. It's yeah. a very, very impressive. And I'm glad that you're coming right back. So now we are running the business on a more different, more experienced level. Yeah. 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 And, you, mm-hmm. and now the, turn, the turn, turn, turnover times are faster mm-hmm. because if you turn around the furniture faster, the money circulates faster. Yeah. And you're able to pay the debts yes. that were lagging. Yeah. And you're also able to move forward. Yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So are you back to being, you know, 5 million turnover a month or is it still a work in progress? It's still a work in progress. Okay. But now it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I can say I'm successful, mm-hmm. not because of the money I have seen or have made all the possessions we have had and lost. Yeah. It's because of the core values that I have acquired through this whole process. Yeah. And it's because I can empower somebody mm-hmm. who is almost at that stage yeah. or who is afraid to get there mm-hmm. to come out. Okay. That is my success story. Right. That is now my definition of success. So now it doesn't matter to me how much we make, which the money will come eventually if you get to that still point. Mm-hmm. Now it matters being a guy in a room who can create a solution when nobody else can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, that's what matters to me now. Excellent. Yeah. And your ex, have you worked it out? Uh, my ex, um, well, we've not spoken in a year. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I take care of the baby by myself, which I'm okay with. I am okay with that. And people who also have are single moms and you single handedly take care of your child, it's okay. It is your child, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And she gives me strength to wake up all the time and also fending for that little girl Mm -hmm. it's like what there is for me now it's so fulfilling yes yeah so we've not spoken in a year and i moved on and completely moved on and uh, like so bad so Mm -hmm. bad so like in so bad so that i take care of my my little one by myself yeah because i don't want that whole thing that i went through yeah yeah because it was really really bad oh my goodness what a story wow i feel like first of all i've I've gone through an entire masterclass in business but also the ups and downs that you've been through and thank you for being so candid with it i'm pretty sure we all have lessons that we can learn about gbv you know domestic violence the red flags you should be seeing the things that you can't you can't see when you're blinded by love in the very first days of your relationship. But also, I think there's an important element there in that when people ask, but why didn't you leave, right? Yes, people need to have grace on people who don't leave Mm -hmm. um, GBV relationship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because if it was as easy as leaving, I would have left. Yeah. It's not easy. If it was a switch, I was telling a friend of mine, if it was a switch... Mm-hmm. I would not switch it off. Mm-hmm. I would yank the whole s- socket yeah, yeah. <laughs> out of the wall. Yeah. It wasn't easy because I, I love this person mm-hmm. and I'm in denial mm-hmm. that this person is like this. Yeah. 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 And the cheating and, and all that. Yeah. It's, I'm lucky to have come out alive and disease free. Yes. <laughs> but wow. have some grace while dealing with people who are like that. Just. Walk, yeah. check up on them and don't yeah. be like, Kwani, we, 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 to yeah, 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 I but agree. constant, don't leave them, mm-hmm. don't leave them, just 
walk with them through and be more graceful yeah. while dealing with yeah. that kind of situation. Wow. Oh, and another thing yeah. <laughs> that I thought, it's about that. I thought that was love. Love is so different. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is, 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 is giving. Mm. At what point do you feel like someone who slaps you so damn hard yeah. is within the, the, what the Bible in Corinthians said about love? Mm -hmm. At what point? Yeah. So people complicate love with their own definitions, but it's clear, it clearly has a manual. Mm -hmm. If you follow the guide, mm -hmm. you will not be abusive. Yeah. You will have more compassion. Yeah. You will have remorse. Yes. And you will not beat anybody. <laughs> Amen and hallelujah so that. that is that. what I learned also in this process. Let's not complicate. If yeah. the person is not patient with you, they don't love you. Yes. Walk. This is true. This if is the true. person slaps you, mm -hmm. you cannot slap someone you love. Yes. Walk. Yes. Don't yeah. be afraid to walk. Yes. Because now see, if I had walked sooner, mm -hmm. would have saved the business. Yes. And now, because now that has taken me, that has taken me back, um, according to how we were supposed to be during mm. this year. In 2023, we were supposed to be, because we are an SME, maybe we would have been corporate. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, but it has taken me back mm -hmm. because I did not know what love is. Yeah. And I did not know what I deserved. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. On that note, I think I'm going to leave us all with a couple of things to think about. Um, I'd like to join you all for spending time with us and listening to Mudoni's fantastic story. I do hope there are lessons that you can take from it. If we're looking for your furniture shop, where do we come to? You can come to Next Gen Suit 39, first floor, mm -hmm. or Utawala. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where in Utawala? Utawala near Astral Pistol Station. You'll just see... Yeah, a big banner. It's either living at Brand Deco or Gay's group of companies. Okay. Just ask for Modoni. I can attend to you directly. Okay. Yeah, because I love. I love what I do. I yeah. enjoy what I do. And this is what I was meant to do. Excellent. Yeah. And you can also use the social media handles that you see over there on the screen to get in touch with Gay's Furnishings and check out their absolutely fantastic pieces. So on that note, I bid you all goodbye and see you next week for another one just like this one.